Hi Gina, it's Caitlin. Um, I'm really excited to be back again for week two and I love the images you sent and I'm really thankful um, that you explained a little bit of what uh, your problem areas were and what you want to achieve in these because I'm, I'm excited to hopefully help you there. Um, <clears throat> so I think you mentioned that you really love the coloring in this image. Um, and I can see why. It's beautiful. I really love it. And look at mom with those crazy boots. Um, she's cute. It's a really cute family. Um, but anyway, I think, so if you look at these images, um, what's interesting is that uh, the background of this has a lot of substance and a lot of texture, whereas this image, um, they're kind of in the shade, but there's light behind them. And so, um, you know, there's nothing really behind them to give you depth and to give you color. It's just kind of overexposed. And so, you know, that's just something to be aware of when, you know, you're shooting and looking for locations is, sure, they're in the shade here, but pay attention to what's directly behind them because, um, you know, that's, that's really what's going to determine um, a lot of what your image looks like. So right where the bench is in this picture here, um, the light was probably great. And that's a great place to shoot because their skin is really bright um, and they're really well exposed. However, behind them isn't well exposed. And so I think that's why you're really drawn um, to this, um, because they have depth and they have something back there to break up the harsh light. So that's something to think about. Um, let's go to this one. Um, so this was straight out of camera, and you're shooting at 4.0 ISO 800. Um, <clears throat> So something you could do here is, if you're shooting broad daylight, your ISO probably needs to be around 200 to 400, maybe. Um, 800 is a little bit high, and what happens when your ISO is too high? Um, your your brights become really bright because your light, your, your light meter in your camera is overly sensitive to that bright light. I mean, when you increase your light sensitivity or your ISO, um, that's going to have an effect on the way your camera takes a picture. And so even though it's pro it was properly exposed, there's probably a better way to expose it to get the best image. So I would take the, the ISO down um, just a little bit. And obviously it's going to get a little bit darker then. And so um, you could even take your shutter down a little bit as well. And, um, you know, if they're in a straight line like this, I would shoot at 2.8. And, and maybe that's just me being too bold, um, but I, I think with my images, I never shoot at 4.0 unless I have a massive family portrait to do. So, um, I, I think that's another reason a lot of my images pop uh, when I'm shooting with backlit. Uh, it's because I, I shoot very wide open, and yes, that takes practice and it takes control, um, in order to be able to, to get everyone in focus, but I think you would notice a little bit of a coloring and a poppy difference if you weren't shooting at 4.0. Shooting at 4.0 with a large family is obviously the most accurate way to shoot. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I am saying that when you shoot, the wide, the more wide open you shoot, the more I've found that I have more uh, pop in my images, so hopefully that helps. Um, so if this was straight out of camera and it was raw, obviously I'd have more um, ability to edit it, but let's see what we can do here. So there are some blown highlights, just faces and um, you know shirts over here, so I'm going to tone down the highlights a little bit, um, darken the shadows, and um, it's, it's kind of a cold image right now, so I'm going to warm it up just a little, oh, not too much, just a little bit, just a little. Um, and so she's obviously a little bit more pale than the other people in the family, or maybe she was just in more of a light. And so she's she's a little bit overexposed, kind of looks ghostly. So um, I may just take her down a little bit. So I'm, all I'm doing is just applying a brush and giving her a little bit more depth. Um, and you can do that right in any, any version of Lightroom. So I would pop up the vibrance just a little bit. Um, not much. I never go over 30. So right at 16 is probably great. And um, and then once you have a great base, you know, this is a nice edit. It looks warm. They look happy. Um, they've got some color. Then you start you can start to tweak things without going overboard. So maybe the darks, because this is such a light image, maybe the darks can be a little bit darker. Um, maybe this can go up just a little bit more. And so that's what we have here. So let's compare this to this. And... 
Okay, so here we go. So, um, so this is your edited image that you sent, and this is the one that I edit edited. And um, I, I think one of the differences here is one, this is a warmer image. Um, so when you brought the exposure down here, unless you spot edited her, you probably brought the exposure down a lot in order to make her not so overexposed. So instead, I just made her a little bit darker by herself so that the whole rest of the image can stay at a really great exposure. Um, I really think warmth and vibrance are huge. And um, yeah, I, it, it's crazy the little tweaks that can really make a huge difference um, in an image. And I, I think something to pay attention to also is that maybe you um, did a little something to the blues. I'm not sure. But if you look at the trees, if we compare the trees here to the trees over here, they, there's a huge difference in that. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe you can take a look at how I uh, edited this last one. You can take a look at this bar over here and just compare it to what you did, and hopefully that, that'll be helpful. But this is a beautiful family portrait, so you should be really proud of yourself. Um, so for here, uh, I think this is great, and I know this seems like a weird thing to be excited about, but I love that his foot isn't cropped out because a lot of people don't pay attention to little things like that, but um, I'm a big fan of having everyone's feet in the picture when it's a, a landscape shot like this, so um, I think that's great. I also think the posing is great for this as well, you know, that mom's leg's leaning in and the daughter's leg is leaning in. It's just a great family portrait, so... Um, something very minor about posing. It probably would have looked really cute if he turned and leaned against his shoulder and propped one leg up just to just so he looked a little more relaxed. Um, obviously it's hard to think of that uh, right on the spot when you're trying to get everyone to coordinate especially with a little guy. So that's just one of those little things. Um, so when I look at this image I see a tint of green. Um, I just see just a green kind of haze to it. So I'm just going to tweak a little bit of the coloring and obviously okay obviously this is not raw and so I don't have as, as many options so um, let me see here I don't know if you've already done this if you adjusted the highlights a little bit but I'm just gonna see what it looks like to adjust the shadows and the highlights uh, see if that changes any of the green the green look um, so let's see I'm gonna turn down that I, I totally understand that you want the vibrant look, that you want vibrant images that pop with color. And to be honest, that comes with a lot of practice. And um, some people just have magic actions that they use. They have buttons that they press, and voila, there's you know this beautiful image. Um, well, actions don't always work that way. And so um, I learned early on that I wanted to be able to create my edits um, my, myself. You know, I don't want to just be dependent on a bunch of Photoshop actions. I want to be able to go into Lightroom and, you know, edit an image so it looks like me. Um, and so that's what I've kind of learned to do, just by tweaking things a little bit here and there. So, um, so let me compare what I just did. I know it doesn't seem like much, but, oops, hold on. Reset it. Okay. And let's take a look. So this is what I... Um, edited and this is what you sent and so um, I don't know if you can see the bluish greenish tint that I saw here and I just you saw me I just tweaked a few little things to make it warmer and to make it feel a little bit more inviting so there is a difference here um, I really think it's just a matter of training your eye to look at an image and, and say okay what is it about this image that that isn't right you know, overall, is there a certain tone or feel? You know, when you look at this for too long, you're going to think, oh, that's great. That's perfectly edited. But sometimes it takes walking away and then coming back and saying, okay, no, that's got a bluish, greenish tint, and I need to change that. So to me, you know, it was very simple changes. I wasn't even editing in RAW. I mean, these are just really small tweaks that I made, and I think it made a big difference. So hopefully that's a little bit helpful for you. It's a beautiful feeling portrait. Um, it's really... I think it's, it has a lot to do just with the white balance and the tones in the image. So, yeah, hope that helps. Let's go to the next one. So for here, same thing. Um, so when I look at this image, I think, oh, the, the you know the depth of field is awesome, cute couple. Um, 
you know, maybe the backlighting isn't great just because it's really, really bright. That's not your fault. Um, but if there had been a tree here, maybe another tree there, something to break up that bright white background, you may have liked it a little bit better. But I do look at this picture and think that it's a little bit cold. Um, and, and I like warm images, so I'm very drawn to that coloring. So forgive me if this isn't your style. Um, but I would this is I would just make some adjustments with color. So if you up the yellow, make it a little bit warmer, it's going to start to look a little green. So I always up this as well. So that doesn't look like a huge difference, um, but it is. We're just going to go down here and go. Let's, let's do five saturation. That's just going to change a little bit of the color of the highlights. Make it a little warmer. Let's do the shadows. Make that a little warmer. Perfect. So you're, this is going to be crazy, but these look like very, very subtle changes, and they are very subtle. A little bit of vibrance. Not bad. Sorry. Sometimes I can't talk and do this at the same time. Okay. So now let's make a copy of this and reset it and take a look side by side at what these images look like. Okay, so do you see the difference? It's a huge difference. And and those were all just very minor tweaks. I think one of the biggest tweaks is, you know, some people think, oh, you're not really changing anything because on this image, I only changed the color of the highlights with 5% saturation of the highlights and the shadows. What, what that's doing is taking just the highlights where the light is hitting the subjects and the shadows and it's changing the tint of them. Over here, the tint is very blue and very green. Over here, it's a much warmer color. So, um, and another thing is I think when images are warmer, we have a perception that they are more lively and they're more vibrant. So even though these colors are still really bright, they look more alive because their skin tones are accurate. So um, I hope that helped. You can see, you can even see the difference in the grass here. Um, but really pay attention to skin tones. They look much more um, warm and inviting. They're kind of blue over here. So um, I hope that was helpful. I really don't think I did a lot of teaching on composition or shooting style or anything like that. But I hope that the editing was helpful to this week. So I look forward to hearing from you next week. Have a great weekend.